this is Callum Harris reporting for Boxing Mad Magazine podcast. On the line with me, I've got Southern Area Champion and the Babyfaced Assassin, Mitchell Smith. Mitchell, I'm very well, thank you. Callum, how are you? I'm not bad, thank you, buddy. Now, for 2013, how would you round up 2013 um, for you, mate? It's been a bit of a quiet year for, for my team and myself. Obviously, only fighting twice. One of them being the one-round knockout, and then the other one being um, a tough ten-rounder against, um, obviously, Scott Moises for the Southern Area Super Heavyweight title. Um, you know, winning the title was nice, but I would like to have like to have been a lot busier than what I was. You know, I had to pull out twice due to two injuries. Um, I've just been a bit unfortunate more than anything. And hopefully that 2014, I'm busy and I'm winning more titles. And I'm looking to get sort of towards the top top ten, top eight uh, at the end of 10, 2014. So, yeah. So how's the hand, mate? Is it, is it yeah, it's well? leading up well. I've I've seen uh, I've seen physio and that and hand specialist again recently, and um, about another week without punching, and I should be I should be back and ready to go again. So I can't wait to start hitting someone again. <laughs> well, going back to that. First round, first round win that you had at the beginning of the year against Gavin yep. Reed. He's not really a bad opponent, is he? For a no, Gavin. Gavin was a tough opponent. He's been, you know, he's been rounds with Carl. He's been rounds with Scott Grid. I think Scott Grid might have eight nine rounds. Um, and obviously going in there and finishing and finishing in one was obviously, you know, uh, sort of a big, uh, big, um, like, like, a, like a shout out. Really, you know what I mean? I, I sort of put myself out there and sort of was letting people know that I was there to, to mean business and yeah and then I went on to win the southern area so you know it was a, it was a good win for me because you know it was there to do the, I was there to do the rounds more than anything and I sort of got him out there in like 2 minutes and 40 seconds so you know I was over the moon with a, with a first round knockout yeah well every indication mate would have said that Gavin would have took you a few rounds I mean looking back Carl uh, Stephen Smith sorry when full 8 rounds went to points with him after Stephen yeah. had 7 rounds Scott Quigg went nine rounds, like you've just said, for an eliminated for British title. After Scott had had 18 fights, Carl blasted him out in two for Celtic title, but he'd only had seven fights. So, to be fair, mate, what you did, you outdid all them guys who, who were mentioned there. Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, I asked for an opponent, for, uh, like, when I spoke to my coach, Jason Rowland, and, you know, he, I mean, Jason's good because he always asked me, what do I think, who, who would I like, and... Um, I sort of said, just get me like a tough opponent that would do that would go the distance with me, you know, and someone that would, I wouldn't be able to just bully out of there. And you know, I, I knew that's why I was like really nice and relaxed before I went out there. And um, you know, when I was in there, you, I wasn't trying to blast him out, but one obviously the punch that caught him obviously caught him cold, and it was a it was a punch that sort of come from nowhere. You know, I was, I was sort of aiming towards towards the body and and throwing one over the top, and it and it caught him cold and. Yeah, and it was and it was over from there really. But I was over the moon with obviously getting him out there, getting him out there quickly. But like I said, I've only done eleven rounds of boxing this year, and you know, obviously I'd like I'd like to have done more. I'd like to have kept I kept busier. So, so you like big big challenges? You want harder fights looking into twenty fourteen? What fights were out there for you? Do you believe in twenty fourteen? Um, I'm looking at like I said earlier. I'm, I'm looking at like the top ten in England for for the 2014. I want I want English titles. I want you know obviously international titles towards putting you towards obviously higher in the world rankings. And, and I just want to be like on verge. I want to be like close towards the end of 2014. I want to be close to a British title. If not, you know if 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 things go right, if not a British title. So people may say rushing. I just want to keep busy. You know, I'm, uh, skills pay the bills. I'm, I'm, my ability is more than capable to to win a British title and go on to wor world honours. And I, I believe in myself 100%. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. And yeah, I just I just want a big 2014. I've been promising people that 2013 was going to be big. Yeah, I come out with a Southern Area title, but injuries have put me back. And they're all they're all sound and they're all they're all sweet now. So. You know, 2014, I'm, I'm promising everyone a massive year from, from myself. And I'm just going to push myself right out there in the rankings and, you know, hopefully come out of a British title at the end of 2014 and start of 2015. So you said that you were, gonna, you were looking at that top 10 in, the, in British honours. 
Is there any fighters in there, any, any names in that top ten that you've got your eye on, that you fancy? You know, at the end of the day, I just want to, I just want to prove to, to, like, to the, to all the British fans, to all the, all the boxing fans that I am number one in the super, super featherweight division in England. It's as simple as that. Um, so anyone that I get, get to fight, we'll, we'll be, we'll be beaten. It's as simple as that. Um, I'll be anyone that is put in the ring room because I'm I'm number one. I'm you know I'm obviously you know there's been a lot of talk about myself and how I'm a how I'm a, like one of the top British prospects. But I'm looking at myself now as like a little bit more than a prospect. But, you know I want to I want to I'd like to think that I'm up there with with some of the big guns now. And I'm you know obviously I haven't I haven't yet to prove it. I haven't I haven't yet proven it, but but. You know, I'm, I, I want to. I want to prove it. So when I do get my chance, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it with, with two hands and, and prove to everyone, you know, what what I can do because no one's seen the best of myself yet. And you know, people have looked at the Scott Moore this fight and have gone, oh, you know, Mitchell Smith, yeah, he's, you know, he's good, but he's he's beatable. You know, we can do this, we can do that. But Scott Moore would give anyone troubles. I mean, he gives. Um, Stephen Foster Jr. troubles. He would give any anybody troubles at that that weight. I mean, he's like six foot one and super special weight, and it's ridiculous, yeah. you know. So he didn't he didn't make it a fight, and you you know he done he done what he needed to do, and he and he made it yeah. tight. So I mean, it, you know, it was just one of them fights that I had to had to take for the title, and. Yeah, basically, when when I when I get when I step up in class, you know, people will understand, you know, that I, I deserve to be like up there with the big guns now. Do you think that the higher higher level opponents brings out the best in you? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you know, I get some top quality sparring. And I, you know, I'm like Carl Fenton's like main sparring partner for his training camps and. Well, let's just touch. Let's just touch on that minute, Carl Frampton. I mean, what are, what are those spars like? I mean, I can only imagine, mate. Oh, you know, we 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 go we go for, you know toe to toe for like ten, twelve rounds. So, you know, we we, you know, it's good sparring for myself, and it's good sparring for Carl as well. I mean, you, you know, you, everyone's got to understand that I wouldn't be used as a punch bag. You know, he's, there's a bag there that he can hit. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I'm obviously doing something for them. Clearly, you know, it's not it's not a one sided spar. It's a good spar. So, you know, it, it, to be holding my own at a level that I'm at now with someone that's on verge of fighting for a world title, you know, only said one thing, and I'm only I'm only going to get better. Do you know what I mean? So, like I said, the, the quicker I step up in class, then people will understand that, you know, I will go I will go the whole way. It's as simple as that. So obviously, that sparring with Frampton gives you gives you a world of confidence, then, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And you know, obviously, not doing many rounds in 2013. You know, obviously, I've done eleven rounds of actual boxing, but to, the spars that I've had with Carl, I mean, we were doing like, you know, what I mean, I don't know, like thirty rounds a week. So you know, I'm getting them in for like three, four weeks. You know, it, it's, it adds up. You know, so but, I mean, sparring with Carl is like is like having a fight. So you know, because you don't hold back. You know, but. Um, just, I'm just looking forward to a big year. I'm, I really am looking forward. I'm itching to go. I haven't hit anything now for like five, six weeks, and you I'm just itching me. to hit something. I'm just itching to hit something. I'm just so looking forward to a big year. You know, I'm just this is what I'm this is what I'm here to do, and I can't wait to start again. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Just looking at 2013 as a fan of the sport as well as being a boxer. Were there any fights out there that, that you enjoyed watching? What was your fight of the year or any fighters that you enjoyed to watch more than any others? Yeah, I thought that uh, Fox and Groves was, was put the highlight on the year. You know, um, I think everyone looked down at Groves and just thought this geezer doesn't, doesn't deserve a shot at a world title. And I know because my, my very good mate, Miles Shinkwin, and my, um, and my training like partner, um, He's a lot everywhere up and coming fighter, very good fighter. Um, he spars with George, and you know, he, I mean, Miles, like, he handles most people, and he turned around and said, like, George is on fire. And I mean, everyone knows George Rose is a class act. He's been class act, uh, amateur at world level, and he is a, he is a pro at world level. 
and I was, you know, I was one of those people that said, you know, I think George guys can do it, and he, and he, and to be honest with you, I, I like me personally, I thought that he got cheated out of winning a world title, you know. So Ross, that put the highlight on the year for me. You think he was stopped too early then? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I, he wasn't. You know, he was, he still had his senses about him. He wasn't completely, like, gone, you know. And in a world title fight, that should have been left at least a few seconds, you know. At least five, ten seconds for him to maybe have held on. If he had been carried on getting clumped, fair enough. But he was still, as the ref jumped in to stop it, he had his arms out to sort of try and hold Fox. So, listen, don't get me wrong, he was hurt, but he wasn't... I don't think it was at that point of the fight to be able to, to, be able to stop it. And he was, he was, he was ahead by a few miles as well, so. So, uh, what would you say then to Carl Frout's rematch or retire? Which some of the girls keeps calling out. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, he's got to look at it from his own, you know, he, I mean, he's not going to take a fight that he feels that he's going to lose. And, you know, maybe, I mean, I personally thought that if, I mean, if I was in Carl Frout's position, I would either try and obviously look for one more payday and and get out, or you know, obviously retire. Because I I do personally think that Groves has his number, and Groves will beat him. You know, every, ten times they fight, ten times Groves will beat him. I just think he's a better boxer, he's a better fighter, and he's a strong man as well. You know, everyone says that Carl's got a, you know, he's got this, you know, he's got this iron chin that nobody can knock out. But you know, Groves has proved that he can hurt him as soon as he hits him, and. That's it for me, basically. That's that's what I think. Brilliant. Well, thanks for joining me today, Mitchell. All thank you. Thank you for, for the interview and that. It's been brilliant. No problem, mate. All the best in 2014. I, obviously, you get the honours what, you, what you're looking for. We all know that you're more than capable of doing it. We hope that you get the, chance, you. To, get the chance to show it, mate. Oh, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you, you need the fights. How, how many fights just out of interest, mate, are you looking at having in 2014? Have you, have you thought about things like that? Uh, five, six. So a lot more busy. Five, six, four, five, busier, seven, yeah. eight, ten pounders. Yeah, a lot busier, yeah. Okay. You know, Frank, Frank's got this new deal with a couple box and, you know, obviously he's always got your call and, you know, I do believe that I can have a busy year and a, and a good year at that, so, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Alright, mate, well, all the best anyway, like I say again, and I'm going to try and get down to you this year because I want to get down to you this year, but the only fact is why I struggle with life. No worries, thank you.